Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, my name is Ellen. So do you like to paint like the masters or want to learn like the masters, but in watercolor? Well, we're going to do that today. I've done ones with Monet and Matisse, but today we're going to paint like... Dun -dun -dun -dun. Guess what? Van Gogh. <laughs> yes, Van Gogh style-esque kind of painting. I go over this step by step. I give you a reference photo that's in the description. Um, you just click it, click on that, just that reference photo. It's right underneath the supplies in my description box. Um, you can, I talk about the Van Gogh paintings, you know, get inspired by, and obviously, you know, Starry Starry Night and his streaky kind of like marks that he makes, but he paints in oils, obviously. He painted in oils. I'm sorry. He doesn't paint anymore. He's no longer alive. <laughs> anyway, um, this would be a fun exercise and doing something different with watercolor. If you're kind of getting bored and out of ideas and play with your watercolor. It doesn't have to be this perfect painting that looks like an apple, an orange, or a flower. Sometimes it's just fun to paint with the medium that you have. You don't have to paint something that's totally realistic and all that kind of stuff. It's just fun just to use the paint itself. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. Also leave a comment below, um, which I talk about at the end, is like a maybe an artist that you'd like to see interpreted in watercolor. It'd be kind of fun. I did little, did use a little gouache at the end, but it's, you know, it's a little bit of the gouache, but mostly it's watercolor. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section, like I said. Also check out my Patreon. I have ad-free videos, traceables, exclusive tutorials, and a live stream in the top tier. It's just a place people go and support my channel, which I super appreciate. We also added a Facebook group where you can share your paintings. We have weekly challenges and monthly giveaways. And you can join and cancel Patreon anytime. So without further ado, let's get painting like Van Gogh. So let me go over supplies. I'm using a piece of Lesions, um, excuse me, Fabiano's 100% cotton cold press paper that I took from a block actually. I removed it from the block because I like the bright white of the paper. I'll be playing around with Princeton 12 Aquarelite and Princeton 10 Velvet Touch series. And so I gave you a reference photo and I just kind of sketched in like, you know, here where the pond is and just the trees and it's just rough. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're just going to be playing with this kind of technique. So as you can see, I, from Van Gogh's paintings, if you've ever looked at some paintings, go look online. Um, he does a lot of like little, have like initial, these are oil paintings, of course, initial color that goes down. And then he does these little lines on top of it. So in the same color vein, like, so like it's a, and think of terms of watercolor, it's a flat wash blue with lots of little different blue tonalities on top of it and creating these little lines. And we're going to be doing something like that. Sometimes a little mixed in here, like he has in the wheat fields here and the cypress trees. And then he outlines his little clouds. So a lot of these have like outlines with lines in them. So let's just try and play with some of that. So you're kind of like doing a wash and then you're adding in lines. So we're going to take my big 12 aqua elite and I'm just going to take some ultramarine blue, water it down. I'm just going to put in the first wash. Now you can remove clouds like we've removed clouds before. Okay. Going to go around my green areas, by the way. And you know, don't freak out if it's not perfect. Just going around my little green. I actually threw in some cypress trees, even though they're not in the, <laughs> not in the picture. Why not? It's your picture. You can do whatever you want. Doesn't have to be perfect. It's Van Gogh-esque. So I'm just throwing in that first wash of color. Maybe trees over in here. And you don't have to be perfect. See how I'm just kind of goofy, kind of throwing that in. I get a little bit deeper. And now if you want to put the clouds in, see he kind of outlined his clouds. We could have outlined the clouds too. But I like to make them look more natural. So I'll take the brush. I'll remove the paint like so and I'll twist it where the clouds are going to be. And then we can do the lines around the clouds after we remove the clouds. I just feel like it looks a little more natural even though this kind of style isn't supposed to be like natural looking. Just it's easier to place where the clouds are going to go than to draw them. It's kind of goofy when you draw them sometimes. Okay, and then you can do the lines around them once you've taken out the color where you want your clouds. 
So of course we have to wait for that layer to dry before we go ahead and do our other layers. Meanwhile, back at the farm, <laughs> let's mix up some greens. Like I said, the pond here is green. You can keep it the green. It has some little water lilies here, kind of cool. And then we've got these yellow flowers. Um, or you can just make it blue. Nobody would know the wiser and nobody would care. Um, the blue can be really nice, but we can do the green. So for greens, you know, I mix a variety of greens. I like to use my peacock blue with yellow and Prussian blue. Peacock is like a turquoise. If you don't have peacock, makes a nice bright chartreuse kind of color. The more yellow you add, look at that. Prussian blue, I like to use to make the deep dark blue. I mean, excuse me, deep dark green. <laughs> and I add a little burnt umber and get that yellow in there. I keep adding the blue and a little bit brown to get a nice deep color. And then we need a medium green. So add some yellow to that. You can have our turquoisey green. So here's a peacock blue, just a touch of yellow. It's more in the turquoise kind of family over here. You can see that. See a little bit, just a little bit of yellow and turquoise. Turquoise green. If you do ultramarine blue and yellow, you get like a very dull, kind of like a sage green. See that? So we've got a bunch of different greens. This is where we're going to have fun, right? Going to water down some of this light green first. We can put the initial wash in. Don't worry about the little yellow flowers. We'll deal with that in a minute. So I'm just kind of washing in this green color. Mm -hmm. I might have to mix up. Make sure you always mix up. It's the key is to always mix up enough paint to have when you're doing like any kind of painting. Because you know to go back and to kind of recreate that same green is not going to be that easy. See, it's going to be a different green. That's a little different and that's okay. It doesn't matter for this particular exercise. The pond is a little bit deeper green. We don't want to do that yet. You can also start putting initial washes of, in, of the trees in. Like here, I'm going to put a medium kind of green, just kind of wiggling the paint. I'll do some more of those medium greens, little sagey greens. There's some deeper greens back here. We're just going to really loosely stick this color in. Here's that little green. I'm thinking, you know, the pond is green, but it's so much green. I think I'm going to make it blue. It's up to you, really. Obviously, it's green because it's, it's really blue. See, it is really blue, but all the green is reflecting it. So maybe we'll just keep it that way. It's just a lot of reflection for me. <laughs> the green. It's overwhelmingly green. And here we're just putting in, a, just loosely sticking all these green colors in here. Just variety of green. As you can see, if you squint your eyes and all these little bushes and trees, they are a variety of green. And the cypress would be a little bit darker. Just filling this in real quick. Filling all those little greens in. Voila. All right, and of course, you have to wait for this to dry. Because if you don't, well, it's not going to be able to do the thing we want it to do. So once you fill in all those little sections, I'm going to go back and fill all my little white areas. We're going to have fun painting in some of these little lines. All right, let's let it dry. So I let that dry. I did think that I'm going to do the, the lake with the blues and the greens. So I'm going to just go in and put some of that blue like we have in the sky here, like you see in the photograph and around some of these water lilies. Why not? 
and then we're going to just do the greens back in here mix up some nice bright greens they're a little bit it's a much darker actually so if you want to go in and go ahead and put in that dark color the reflection of it is much darker you can be a little bit careful on this so you're making that deeper, deeper, not super dark right away. You don't want to do that because we want to put the colors on top of it, like I was talking about, those little lines. So here we have some nice, pretty water lilies. I'm making them in bright green. And then you go around with, it with that darker green color. And of course, we'll have to wait for that to dry. Now it's not super dark, as you can see. And there were some water lilies kind of poking in here. We can kind of play around with that using some um, thick paint and a little bit of gouache. Now see how this little area is still damp? This is a great trick, you can still do it. You can still kind of bleed it by just tapping the edges. You can see the tree kind of reflecting coming down and it goes into the water. Just tippy tap. Has that nice reflection look to it. Oh, it's still damp. Okay. Get some of that bright green. Okay, and then we have that darker green going around our little water lilies. I'm still using this big old brush Like I said, you have to make this perfect because we're going to be doing that kind of fun technique. All right, so we got our initial wash in and now we have fun. You can still use this brush or switch to the number 10. And we mix up all those greens. You can mix up some more greens. Got to mix up some more green here. Now you'll get sick of me painting every little nook and cranny, so I'm going to show you how you do it, and then you go back and do it yourself. So I mix up the medium green, light green, turquoise green, there's more yellow, right? You want them all and have a nice variety to them. And we're going to start to do some of the things that he does. Because it's so light, don't go super dark, <laughs> but see, his strokes, the wheat fields are going this way, so his strokes are going this way. See that? The clouds are kind of swirling, so the, the strokes are swirling. So you kind of want to go where the, the flow of the actual painting is. So you see in the photograph, these things are kind of streaking upward, and then here kind of streaking sideways. So we're going to kind of do that. You don't want the first initial streak to be super skinny. That one's kind of skinny. I might want a more of a rounded brush. Maybe I'll have to switch to a Neptune series brush. I'm sorry, guys. I want more of a round. We'll play around with this. Don't want a super point. He's got a point, a rounded point, if that makes any sense. Like, there's a brush that's like this. It's a nothing nonsense brush. And you just go like this. It makes a rounder kind of point instead of a pointy point. We don't want a very pointy. I might even use my filbert brush. I don't know. I have to figure this out. <laughs> yeah, see, the filbert brush is going to do little points. Okay, so I'm using this number eight filbert brush. Um, and I'm going to use it on the chisel side. And look how nice and soft, round. These were, looking, these were looking too pointy. I know. I'm sorry, guys. Sorry for telling you to use that brush, and I switched it out. Okay. See the little streaks I'm getting? And you just take your time. You can grab the different color paints. And we're going to do this little streaks. Just like we're Van Gogh. <laughs> I'm grabbing the different colors. You can kind of, don't let them blend into each other. And Some of them have blended in, so I don't want to do that. We're going to do the initial, we're going to keep them separate so they don't 
blend. See how I'm doing this? It's starting off light. I'm going to keep building with the color. And when that dries, we put another color on top of it. But that's how kind of he does it. So here's the cypress tree getting a little darker here. You can do like these little swipes. You can outline it. He sometimes outlines some of the items and then goes in and does the little lines. Outline it. And do these little lines. This is like when you put the music on, right? Gonna have fun. And you get that outline kind of cypress like he has. And you get even darker still with some of the color. Oh, we're being Van Gogh today. Only thing is we're not gonna go mad. He went a little mad. And little streaks. You see that? You can do this with watercolor. You know, some people say, oh, because it's oil, you can't. Oh, yes, you can. You can play around with this. So here we go with this color. It's more of a medium. Making the streaks of the little bush trees. There was an actual tree trunk here. A couple of them. I'm adding in some burnt umber to do that. And then you go in and make the tree. Again, with those little streaks, see? All this fun stuff. That's kind of what he did. You can start off with light colors and then go back in and add another layer. See, I'm going in and taking. Don't want to blend it. This is the thing. We want to just do one layer or you can have them separately where they're not touching the darker tone. Does it make sense? All those little lines. So I'm using a filbert number eight. Here's that turquoisey color. You can play with that color kind of in the lake. See now I'm going sideways. And this is kind of how I did it. So let me fill in all my little areas. So here, like I said, it was going upward. This kind of dries, so I can go over it now with another color. See, now it changes. Um, over here, it's kind of sideways. So he did both, going up and sideways. Be conscious of the color tones you're using too. You don't want them too dark. There was a lot of yellow. So you can just use like, I took some yellow from the tube and I'm just going like this. Cause there was a lot of yellow. Cause of a yellow field. You can do that. Basically right out of the tube. Hit the little yellow spots right on top of that light green. And then you can kind of paint around it. Same thing around here too. Right? Mine's a cabin yellow deep. This is more like a lemony yellow. If you have a lemon yellow, I have this yellow. It might not show up though because it's so light. I'm a dazzling yellow, lemon, lemon color. Um, let's try that. It might be too intense. It's not as, yeah, see, it looks like the lime green color. It's not gonna work. Yeah, that's why the cabin yellow deep works great. So again, here we're gonna just gonna keep going like this, making those little lines. You can make a little thicker, but you see he has smaller ones in the background. All these little ditty lines. It kind of reminds me of Matisse in a way. It's, they kind of did the same thing, right? But this is Van Gogh. What Matisse didn't do, what Van Gogh did, which we're gonna do in a second, is the sky. Right, so we'll take the ultramarine blue get a little bit darker and we're going to do our little swirls here. So you see how he has these kind of swirls happening. We can do some swirls 
in our sky with the clouds. See that? Little lines. Little lines kind of forming around the clouds. It will be tedious. It might even drive you a little nuts. You see, out like this, and then curve out and curve. Get like a wave. Does it seem like Van Gogh now? <laughs> That's a trick. A little wave, like the little waves that he did. Out and over. Something fun to do when you're bored and you don't have any ideas. Take a simple landscape and go do something fun like this. See, you making those little lines. It's not starry, starry night, but... And of course, you can change the color. Um, grab a little Prussian blue. See? That's how we do our Van Gogh. The Van Gogh way. Going around those clouds. You can water the blue down and put them in the cloud. That's how I would go around the clouds like he did. Like I said, he kind of outlined it, but it's kind of hard to outline it when you're drawing initially. You kind of want to get the shape naturally and then go in and do this, which is what I'm doing. See? Now right now, I'm just still using Ultramarine Blue. And I've got a couple of shades darker. When this dries, you can kind of go in and add some value that are deeper in some of the areas. Just wait till that dries though, because otherwise it's going to blend and it won't have that streaky look like he did. If that makes sense. And see, I'm just slowly taking the filbert. Now, if you have a brush that's rounder without being a filbert brush, use that. My tips were too pointy. You want a round point. I'm sure you have some. You can even use it like a crappy brush. This is not a tutorial where you have to use fine brushes. Use whatever crappy one. Like when you have some crappy ones you started out as a beginner, you don't even use any more of them now. You can use them. See, now I'm doing the streaks like this, so it's like windy, huh? Windy sky. Already here, it kind of looks like Van Gogh, right? <laughs> and that's it. And you're gonna go in and add more color and depth. So I'm gonna fill this in, I'm gonna come back. So once you get that first initial like little streaks in with the one, you have the one flat wash color and then the second color, then you have to wait for each layer to dry and you can go in and start adding in the deeper colors too, right? So I have the dark green, there's dark green little trees out this way, there's some dark green. You see I'm just doing the little dashes still though. And you can kind of, he has like some outlined type, you know, bushes that could go like this and outline some of the trees and some are not, but a lot of it's outlined. If you look at some of his paintings, he'll have like a little outline on some of the bushes. So here there's a kind of like outlined bush. We'll do that and outline this bush. That's kind of what he did. And you can add the little streaks for the um, different tonalities of the, where the other bushes and trees are. See, I'm going in and adding that darker green. And again, do like the little dashes, creating that little bush. And I went in here and made a darker green for the water. And again, this field area, I'm gonna have to go back in again and add some more streaks. Little lines like this. Like you see, he did all of the lines. Probably have less lines than me. Maybe just do like one wash color and then go back over the lines. I'm having way more lines than he would probably do, but that's okay. It doesn't really matter. You get the idea of how it's supposed to look, right? Like here. I'm gonna add a little brown to the screen. So it gets a little deeper. A lot of outline kind of situation happening. So I'm probably grabbing some blue, mixing that deep green and get this outline of the, the lake. Did a lot of that kind of stuff. 
outlined the bushes. With the cypress trees, not so much. You just kind of had them poking out like this, like you see. With these ones would be outlined. And then you'd have the lines kind of in here, poking the darker tree out here. It's just using watercolor in a different way, you know, than you're used to. Getting that dark little dashes. You know, another trick, we talk about this, if you just want to keep it all watercolor, keep it all watercolor, but gouache is a great trick to get all the colors in there as well. And the sky, so see how I had like that first kind of like light wash and then the other wash? I'm going to go back in my sky, get a little deeper in some areas. You know, he had different colors. He had the turquoise. I could go and grab some turquoise. Make up his sky. See that? I'm going to get that a little bit lighter. Different blues. And you get those little dashed lines again. Like starry, starry night. Starry, starry night. <laughs> Don't ask me to sing. But that song, I like that song. See, I'm going adding in those deeper colors. And now it looks like Van Gogh. And so for the water, same thing. That's a little too dark, but do little lines to indicate water. Now here he had some, I mean, sorry, in here in the photograph, it's a little brown. If you, you know, you could add in some deeper color streaks that you see happening, like this brown part of the um, greens and the yellows kind of happening here. We have these water lilies in the water with a very bright greenish yellow. And here I'm going to do a few more streak colors and then add in those bright yellow flowers. If I squint my eyes, it's more yellow in here. So yes, I'll have my gouache, which I love. And I'll add it to my cabin yellow deep. And we'll get that light yellow that you see that you can put in here. And he would just kind of tap it like the Impressionist would do. See? You got the yellow fields. And then when you go in there and you see some variations of the darks kind of happening around the yellow, you can go back in, do streaks around those. It's very yellow up here. I am going to do little streaks going sideways. So it seems yellow. Quash is your friend. So this ends up being a little more mixed media, but you get the effect that you're looking for. But you see how you did the sky? You can do Van Gogh skies. It's so much fun. This is where a pointy brush would come in handy because the, the filbert's making these little half moons. <laughs> but you get the idea. If it's too streaky in here, you can kind of blend it a little more. I, I can choose to do that. I can pretend like it's half Van Gogh and half me, you know. And same thing, like I said, you can add the darker kind of colors, kind of streaking on some of these little flowers underneath them. Now I noticed that my streaks are kind of stiff like this. He kind of has some that wiggle. So I'm going to bend some, bend, bend a little backwards and forwards, see? And the photograph I have, they're kind of doing that too, but I feel like the green melded too much. It should be much darker here than here. So you might want to go in and make it a little bit darker. I'll add some blue, make it a bit yellow, some like a deeper blue green. 
because it just kind of blends too much right now. I'm going to just go in here and make it darker. We don't want it to blend. It's supposed to stand up. Mixing my little darker. It's more blue aqua green tone. And now it stands out like it's supposed to. And that's our Van Gogh. <laughs> now you can get more colorful with the Van Gogh and do more. You know, I did yellow. We don't have to keep the yellow. You could have gone in and added different flowers. We could add, besides the yellow, because it's the photograph of going by, go in and add some purple and blues. I have uh, lavender, I'm mean, sorry, lilac and verdier blue. I mean, if you try to put some of those colors down right out of the tube and use a different brush, you might get a nice cool effect. So I'm going to use the lilac. See? Maybe it's prettier than the yellow. None for the wiser. You know, you can change the flowers. Why not? Put a little of that and add some ultramarine blue to that color. And you get this nice blue tone, purplish blue. I can change the flowers if I want. That's my picture. I mean, it's not realistic, <laughs> but who cares? It's my impressionistic style blur. And don't be afraid, by the way, just because it's all green here, you can go in and add purple streaks. Then it looks a little more impressionistic, doesn't it? A little pink, purple. So really just have fun with it. Don't stress out about it. Just putting those flat wash colors in first. I'm actually going back to my pointy brush here. Can you believe it? I think if I push down like this on the side, it works out great. Before it was just not working out, so I used the... Um, I used my filbert brush, but you want a brush that doesn't have a pointy point. If that makes sense. So I hope this was fun for you. I was trying to play around with painting with different artists. Um, you know, we'll work on some different names. If you have some names of artists that you'd like to see kind of interpreted watercolor, put them in the comment section. Love to hear about it. All right. I hope this was fun. I hope you have a fantastic day. Take care, and I will speak to you soon.